everyone and welcome back to crafters tv did you have a nice little break did you refresh yourself did you have a cup of tea and uh, a little bit of lunch or breakfast depending on where you are i hope you did and i hope you're well and rested and ready for a bit more crafty inspiration now did you get the theme of this show from J from jan's little you know little teas did you yes i'm sure you did this is your starter skill show all about shaker cards now some of these are obvious shaker cards the first one we're going to do is our shape shaker cards then we're going to take a few other couple of other um, die collections and show you how they can become shaker cards too so you know just making shaker cards from other dies that you might have in your collection if you've not got some of these then go onto the website and you'll be able to pick them up if not have a look at some of the dies that you might have in your collection and see how all of those wonderful top tips that our Jan is going to give you you're going to be able to apply to your um to your dice that you've got so i've mentioned her name a couple of times so let's say hello to the lovely jan and see what she can tell us all about shaker cards oh now then i've got lots lined up for you today so like corinne says we're going to use three different products one that was designed specifically for shaker pieces along with a product that will make the shaker pieces and then i'm going to look at different ways of incorporating things that you like we've just said that you may already have if not we've put them on the um, the website there today for you to access so yeah different ways of doing it i did a master class on this a little while ago uh, where we went through different types of shaker cards so i looked at doing the traditional style we did the one where we stacked up layers of a die cut we did the infinity shaker and all things like that so if you have a look on youtube if you can access youtube and look back for that if you just pop in master class shaker cards um, that one should come up for you and there's some more ideas on there but I wanted to sort of take it back to the bones of how it actually works mm -hmm. today and sort of little tips about getting things, you know, sort of right. There's, there's different ways of doing things. And again, I might do it differently to how Corinne makes them, to how other members of the team make them. But I'm just going to give you my take on it today. So, yes, looking forward I, to it. I look forward to it, too. And we've got people here with us already now. We've still got um, just our George in his little room doing all the bells and whistles and knobs and all the he's so busy we've got nicola in later but for now it's still george it's still it's still a nice little toasty room out there so yeah it's not warm day here um but we've got grace now on social she's with us for the rest of the day and she's let me know that we've got um Lynn Blackledge here says, good afternoon from a reasonably sunny Isle of Wight and I'm sitting at my craft table busy making cards. Well, that's the perfect way to spend an afternoon, Lynn. Alicia Gordon says, good morning, greetings from Arkansas, listening to my favourite channel while getting ready for church. Have a wonderful day, everyone. And I hope you have a wonderful day too, Alicia. Diane Cadman said, good afternoon, everyone. We've got Lois Scatoff, good morning from Ohio. And Kate McQueen saying, good afternoon, crafty peeps just relaxing after yesterday's intense crafting session was good fun though <gasps> did you see we did a craft along yesterday i oh, know it was beautiful it was lovely beautiful, wasn't it yes. yeah we still got um christine here christine mahoney hey again watching while getting ready because she's got a painting class later and hello jan corin cctv team and all you crafty people i hope you have a beautiful sunday it's from lynn Vasquez, Vasquez. i'm not Vasquez. sorry i'm not very good with pronounced um we've got Antoniette, Antoniette from South Africa. We've got, oh, we've got the bouncing through. Minette from Norway. Joe from South Dakota. Ellen from Florida. And Nanny to the girl says, good morning, everyone from Central Wind, Wind, Wisconsin. Expecting another winter storm late tonight through tomorrow. But, oh, I know. I'm chilled to the bone today. Rachel Brown says, good afternoon. And Joe and jo Holzer says, yay, a jam day. <laughs> there you go. Right. So what we're going to look at first is our shaped shaker cards. Shaped shaker cards. They are <laughs> brilliant. They are really they're, they're designed to do everything you need them to do to create the perfect shaker. So we've got our cheers to you which is our lovely sort of mason style jar and you've got all the little elements to do your tags your straws all your little bits and your shaker elements we've got our born to bloom which is our beautiful floral shaker card and again still with all the elements you've got your perfume bottle which we call eau de parfum 
which is uh, such a sweet one. And the final one of the shaker cards is Hello Beautiful, which is our gorgeous butterfly. And again, with all the elements. Now, we've added into this our um, Jewel of Love. Now, this is a really clever die. Look at that. One die, and it's going to cut you 40 or 50 little heart-shaped sequins. Isn't that perfect? I'm just going to tell you a bit more about all of these and how they work. Right, so I chose the Eau de Parfum from those shaped shaker cards there. So uh, we're going to have a go at doing these. Now, you can actually make these as a card or you can make them as a freestanding element or you can make them as a topper to go on a card. So lots of different ways to use them. What I've actually done is I've made mine. I've, I've put my little one together here. It is so, so cute. And I've got my little shaker pieces in here, which I'm going to show you how we've arrived at those. But what I've done is inside, here I just I'd got the little tassel in my drawer so I thought oh I'll just just pop that on so this goes around the top here and I've actually popped a little um, velcro closure on here because what I've done is pop a little tiny box inside and you can just see in in let me get it the right way for you in there i've made a little box to go between the two sides to make it into sort of more of like a little gift element and it's only very diddy so you know maybe a couple of little chocolates in there or something like that but i just thought it was just something a wee bit different so i'm going to show you how i've made this and how to put it together and how you can make your own shaker pieces if you don't have the sequins and things like that so everything that i've done here apart from the addition of the the card stock is from the die set including the little elements at the top and the tag with the sentiment i've just added my own little tassel on there there is one in the set which i'll show you but i just remembered having these in the drawer and i thought oh it just adds that little bit of something so that's what we're aiming for so we're going to use that eau de parfum set and in there you're going to get a set of dies which is going to enable you to create that sort of shaped element and then you've got dies in there that actually do extra sort of features and i'll go through those as we use them and then together with that you've got your little set of stamps in each one that echo the theme so you can see here where i got the top element of the bottle there and the little squeezer element the little air bit where it sort of pumps through and then this one is actually um i've stamped this one out this is where i started with when i did the tassel and they thought, oh, actually, I have got some real ones. So I'm going to use this one on the demo, but I've got that real tassel on there. And then again, you've got sentiments in there as well. So we're going to use all that together. And the first thing I'm going to do is just cut one of the shapes. So you've got an outline die and then you've got your sort of middle part to it as well. So what this is going to do is cut you that sort of frame shape. So we're going to create what I've done here in the gold glitter card but I'm going to cut one in plain white cardstock because I need that to fit in with with what I'm doing so I'm just going to show you how to pop them together I've got a piece of the um, multi-purpose card again okay I'm going to take a little bit of tape because what I want to do is pop these together now two straight edges are going to go together at the bottom and then you'll find that if you position this in here you just want to have about an equal proportion going round the edge here so around here it just i'm just eyeballing it wants to be about an equal space all the way through so once you're happy with it and i do get very pedantic about this i need to sort of right there we go i'm just going to stick oh, the two dies together okay so make sure that they're not going to move i'm still not got that in the right place now it's wriggled right tell you what let me do it on here for a second so yeah just place them so that you've got about the same that's better and then i'm going to stick the bottom piece as well and then we can pop it on our piece of card so i'm going to cut that out of white card stock we'll just pass that through the machine again thin metal dies so they will go through your gemini this one will go through the junior you could use it through your midi if you so wished or if you've got the larger gemini then obviously you've got that plate capacity to cope with that one so we're going to pass that through 
and I've done this several times for this particular design. With it being like a little gift box, I wanted to build up some strength in that sort of outside frame layer. So I'll talk you through what I've done when we've got this one out. And you can see that it's actually cut two sections. So we've got that inner bit, which is actually spare in this case. I don't actually need that bit. The piece that I want is actually this element here. So just to take that out gently, and you can see now that this matches that frame for the front of it. So you can cut this in whatever card you like. So what I've done is I've done exactly that, and I've done it in the gold mirror card. So just the addition of my metal shim. Whenever I'm cutting glitter card, I always cut it onto the metal shim just to break that sort of coating. And what I'm going to do is just stick these two together to give it a little bit more rigidity so that we can use it as the sides of a box. So a little bit of the tacky glue there. You can use your tape runner if you so wish. But I just want to make sure we've got a nice good stick round there and literally because they've been die cut we know that they're just going to sit nicely on top of each other in the same space so just line them up and get, get those sort of and it just gives it a bit more stability okay and then I've done exactly the same as that but this time instead of sticking the two straight together I've actually incorporated a little piece of acetate in this one as well so you can just see where that's catching the light there so I've got the two pieces again I've got the gold one at the front and then I cut just the outside element so I've just cut the large one here in the acetate and I've trapped that between the gold frame and the white frame on the back so it's got that piece of acetate trapped in the middle that's going to be the front where we're going to pop those little shaker pieces inside and then obviously I wanted kind of a, a backdrop. So I've used this die again on its own and I've cut a couple of pieces which I've stuck some of the vellum to. Now you can use vellum from any of the collections. I just happen to have my daisy collection out on my desk, but we've also had vellum in the Say It With Flowers collection that we uh, had on the show if you were watching earlier this morning. And a lot of the recent Sara Signature collections have got the vellum inside. If you don't have vellum, you could use a pattern paper. If you don't have anything suitable, you could make your own background with the inks and things like that. So lots of different ways of doing that. So what I've got is I've got one for the front which is going to go uh, behind here but what I want to do is pop some foam tape in this one to give me room to put the shaker elements in and then I've got one that's going to go for the back of the bag so you can see that there is a little bit of vellum behind this one and then on the back I've just got the vellum shown with I didn't put the acetate in this one this is actually the vellum in the the middle which is um, should be should be okay like that so I can stick this one down and get that one ready and then we just need to pop some foam tape and build those shaker pieces. So again, I'm going to use the um, tacky glue. If you prefer to use a red line tape, you could do that. The tape bends around nicely around the edges of the, the curves. But I'm just going to go with the tacky glue. And again, line these up and just stick them together. So it's just building up that strength. So I've now actually got three layers of cardstock. I've got the one on the back. And then I've got my two layers of the frame. So it's actually quite a decent strength now to be using as the side of a, a box. So we'll leave that one to dry for a second. And then I'm going to come back to this one. So I've actually got my foam tape, which I think we've also popped on the, uh, the website for you. And all I'm going to do is pop round the inside of here. And just make sure that everywhere you pop in the tape, it meets together perfectly because you don't want any of those little shaker pieces to escape. So again, you'll be able to curve it round and make sure that it's sealed all the way round. So I've just put a piece across the bottom and then I'm going to take this piece all the way around that curved edge. Here we go. And then make sure that when I take it to the bottom here, that it's pushed right up against that first piece that I pressed down. So that's now nice and secure. And then I'm just going to put a little piece, um, if you remember, yeah, just across the top here. 
Okay, like so. Ooh, sticky. So that one's ready to receive the shaker pieces. So we've got our back piece ready. We've got this one's going to go on here to create the front with the shaker elements inside. Now, I think if I remember rightly, I took the top off here because we don't actually need that piece. It's going to be sort of hidden behind here. OK, so to come to the shaker pieces, then I've actually got that jewel of love. And these are just ingenious, absolutely ingenious. If you are running low on things like sequins or bits that you put in your shakers, you can make your own. So I've just got a scrap of the gold uh, satin card. I'm going to pop this on here, pass it through the machine, and we're going to get loads and loads of little shaker pieces to go inside. Now, in your die, there's also elements that are a different shape in each set. So if you buy, you know, a collection of these, you've got lots of little ones. And again, I'm just going to pop this on some of the turquoise because I had a little bit of blue in the um, vellum. I'm going to pop that in as well. So back with the plates, pop those on there and then pass these through, you know, and you can always do these, you know, whatever you've got, it's a great way of dealing with your scraps. If you've got bits of scrap card, pop them through and just keep them all in a little pot ready. And you've got your own sort of let us sort of shake a collection going on there. I just think it's a really clever way of getting bits to go into the, uh, the shaker elements. So we've got those lovely little blue ones there. You can see those nice little flowers in this one. So I just need to take those off there. I've got one missing, one's hiding, it's there. They're still in my die. There we go. And then also we've got, look at these, it's like Christmas. So again, loads and loads of them, you know, and you can cut these as many times as you want. You've got an always got a, a supply. And I mean, I wouldn't be getting rid of this bit either. You know, you've got your own sort of ready made stencil there if you wanted to incorporate that into the design as well. Or it's, it's almost like what we used to call the sequin waste. So, yeah, I'd be hanging on to that bit as well. So I've now got all these little pieces that we can pop inside here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work onto the uh, onto here on this instance. And then we're going to literally pop this one onto the back to enclose them. So I need to take off my tape, my, my liner off the tape. Just pop that carefully, even though we've curved it round. You can see how easy that comes away. And then we've got a bit here at the bottom. Do that one. I'll get that one off ready as well. And then what I'm going to do, obviously, this is the front now. I've got it face down. So I actually need to pop my pieces in here sort of face down. So now then at home, I had my little sticky tool and I don't think I've brought it with me. So I'm just going to grab a few of these. We don't need to put loads. I think I put too many in the original sample. I got a bit giddy and I had all these lovely little pieces and I thought, right, we'll stick them all in. And I think there's a few too many. The, the risk of putting too many in means that they're not going to move around as much. And again, it depends, you know, what you're looking for. There's no right or wrong with it as to how many you put in. But if you do fill it too much, they won't move about quite as much inside. So again, I'm just going to pop some of those in as many as you wish. And then I would keep all the others in a little pot to use on another occasion. And then I'm also gonna pop these little blue pieces in as well, which are actually double-sided, but Jan's OCD says that they have to go in the right way because it was a scrap of linen card. And under a microscope, you'd be able to tell that the linen side was facing the right way. So honestly. I was just about to say, Jan, if you've got double-sided cards, it might make it easier. It might. I did think about that when I did the gold, but I thought if I stick two layers together, it might make it a bit bulky. Yeah. Now, I always add what I call my insurance policy when I'm making a shaker card. Although we've got all the tape on there, I'm also just going to run round the tape with a little bit of my tacky glue as well, just to make sure that we've got a really nice seal. And I always do this with shakers because the last thing you want is for that to come apart and all those little pieces fly out. So once we've got those inside and we're happy with that, 
we can literally line this up now so i'm just looking over the top of it line it up with what's underneath and then leave that one let the glue cure for a second or two before you risk the temptation is to pick it up and shake it all about but just leave that one for a second and then what i did i actually measured the bottom edge of the box so i had a look at that against my ruler and we were looking at two and a half inches across this edge here so all i've done is taken a piece of cardstock and i measured the two and a half inches for my box which is this part sort of here yep mm -hmm. and then i've added an inch and a quarter all the way round so my box is going to be an inch and a quarter deep all right so i've just literally ended up with a piece for this particular design it was five inches by three and a half and then i've scored on my scoreboard all four sides at one and a quarter inches now obviously depending on the style that you're doing that may differ but for this particular one that worked out i sort of did a little trial run and then i've just used a scrap of that vellum in the base of the box just to sort of link it all in together and then normally we'd sort of put our tape here to fasten it onto the inside to make a nice neat corner on a box but because this is the bit that we're going to see i want to fasten these around the outside which is why i've got my tape on that other side here so that we've got a nice clean finish inside so all i'm going to do then is take that tape off here and again if you're using a wet glue on this occasion you know you've got your tacky glue i know some people like to use a wet glue and then just clip the sides of the box you can use your tape runner it's perfectly strong enough tape to actually do the job i tend to i rely on my red line tape a bit too much i think i use it for lots of things so again these are just going to go around the outside of the side so i'm literally going to make a nice corner and just wrap that one around the edge here okay so this bit's optional you know you might be making your shaker element to go on the front of a card you might want to actually make it you know as a set topper so if obviously making the little gift box just sort of added an extra visual to it so you can just see there we've got that nice little tiny little box just to fit a couple of chockies in there and then i'm just going to make sure that that's all sealed well with my bone folder and this is now just the right size for this to cover the base here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to stick with that red line tape and I'm just going to pop a couple of pieces across here and the same on the other side. And by the time we've got that ready, that piece should have dried for the shaker element. So again, on here and the same on the other side. We've got some very low flying aircrafts here in Acliff today. I don't know whether any of you guys can hear that on the... Uh, the monitors there but uh, I don't know what's going off out there that's about the third one I've heard today so again give that a nice press make sure that all those little air bubbles have gone out of the tape and then we can take this away and then I'm going to pop the back one on first which is the plain one okay and again all I'm going to do is line up that bottom edge with the base of the box there and stick that so we've got a nice flush edge here and then stick that one in and just give it a little press down and then we can do the same on the other side and that one's ready to receive the front which has got those nice little shaker pieces in so that should have set started to cure now and you can see here probably could have done with a few more in there but you get the idea with it there and we're going to do the same again here i'm just going to line that up with the base of the box okay and then when you're happy with it you usually just give it a little press with my bone folder to make sure that that glue's all stuck down nicely so you can see now how we're getting that little box inside and then we've got the means here to start and pop it together so on your stamp set then for the sort of accessory pieces we've got the little sort of spritz a bit here and all i've done is stamp these onto card and then just popped a bit of color on with my alcohol markers we've got the little um is it the atomizer that bit the squeezy yeah, bit atomizer. oh our george is on it he knew there we go and then you've got the little tassel there and then also in the metal work 
you've got this piece which cuts out a gorgeous little tag shape here and I've just chose the celebrating style from this one to stamp on it we've also got eau de parfum birthday girl love and thank you on there as well so those are going to be my sort of accessories pop that one there so again with that tacky glue because I'm going on to the glitter card the tacky glue I found works really well and that one's going to line up with that front section like so just let that one sit on there now I did this at home what I read to remember is to stick this one in as well before and I've just I've cut it again this one you actually get the die uh, for this piece here so I've just cut it out of the gold to back it so that we've got a little bit front and back there but I do want to trap that bit behind here so that lines up with the little um, hole at the front here so you've got that sort of element there and then this one I'm just going to pop on the front of it and I've just realized that I didn't bring my little velcro dots but I'll show you the original one that I did again I'm going to pop this one right on the front here and then again I'll just use the little paper tassel on this one under there and then the only thing that I added to the other one was the little velcro dot just to hold this together so that's where we've got to whoops a daisy let me just get that one back on there he's decided to jump off and then if I bring in the one that I did at home we've got pretty much the same thing I just found that nice little tassel that's hiding just on there and I've got a few more shaker pieces in that one and then I think I added just a couple of little gems in the edge of the tag there as well just to coordinate with it so yeah and I love the idea that you can make it was that making your own shaker pieces I just think was absolutely brilliant thank you Jan that was absolutely gorgeous now the other shapes you're going to get is the um, the live life in bloom I think that's the right word so you've got the flower and if you wanted to you could not only make a regular shaker you could make a double shake a double easel you could make a uh, card that is shaped like the shape of the shaker wow there's a lot of words there or you can use it as a topper for the front of your cards but however you want to use them these shaped shaker cards are an absolute perfect addition to your crafty stash there we go I'm loving Jan's take on it though it's great isn't it absolutely perfect and so are you there's loads of you joining us since um, I last read out we've got Anton Antoinette um, Beth Minette they all say that's an adorable card Brenda says hi my crafty pals from Saxilby I have this die and not used it well hopefully between the samples and Jan's project will have inspired you Beth Malone says good morning hope everyone's having a great weekend oh, loads of people looking forward to seeing jam worker Ka uh, magic says kathy good afternoon says pamela greenwich uh, greenage sorry shadaya says good morning all my crafty friends on the chat a pleasant sunday to all and hello nana jan there we go we've also got um mary pat 1000 lois lois and um betty both say yes we can hear the airplane <laughs> stephanie thinks it's very clever and shadaya says as usual so precise and stunning nana jan love it wow what a clever idea says evelyn pamela says that's so cute wendy said these are adorable absolutely beautiful says beth now quick question tim c says what width size foam is best for shaker cards please well we've actually popped one on the um is it the shop the day section yes. we've got on the the website and i've just taken this out of its packet i saw you take that out of yes. the packet before the show <laughs> so if i actually pop this on here you can see exactly if you want to take a screenshot of that one there we've got foam on a roll it's a 10 meter length it's five millimeters wide so half a centimeter wide and three millimeter depth so you've got a you know sort of a three millimeter gap to pop your shaker pieces in and that's the one that i like to use it's nice and narrow you've got a whole big roll you know 10 meters is going to go a long it way will go a long way won't and it? that's the one that we've popped on the show for you today so uh, 
that's where I'm at with it. There you go. Absolutely perfect. Thank you. Hopefully um, that was... Tim, hopefully that ho helps. And, uh, yeah, you can uh, go and look, like I say, on the shop, the show or shop the day page. And just remember, keep mentioning it, you've got your double points all weekend. So, yes, that will be absolutely perfect perfect right we're going to have a very very for a short break just give you a little bit of detail about club and spa and then we'll be straight back with our second demonstration welcome to club inspire the crafters companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course the Club Inspire community group on Facebook where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration and of course you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend and the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. Welcome to Crafters TV. With more than 35 hours of live shows each week, it's your home for all things craft. So, join our family of craft experts with live tutorials and demonstrations every day. We shine the spotlight on new and innovative crafting products here on Crafters TV. creative and craft along with our amazing deals. Your next craft project is only a click away. Tune in live seven days a week or watch on catch up at crafterscompanion.com, Facebook or our YouTube channel. You can chat to us, craft along and meet new friends in our online crafting community. You entertain us, you give us a community to talk, you know, in the chat. That wouldn't happen without you guys. It's like um, Crafters Companion is magical. There's magic here. You all have time with each other. <laughs> You're not free to boot camp. Get off. <laughs> There's a show for every type of crafter, from first-time dabblers to full-time makers. So stop what you're doing and enjoy the fun here on Crafters TV. Well, you absolutely loved that last project from um, Jan. So many. This is clever. Um, what, what a clever idea. Cute and gorgeous. These are adorable. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, there we go. Love it. Uh, beautiful gift box. Um, absolutely stunning. Loads and loads of um, responses. And you'll have seen um, our Debbie demonstrated our Foam on the Roll song for you. So that is what we would recommend Tim C, who was suggesting it. Now, the next thing we're going to see is how you can take your, um, your regular dies and turn these into shaker cards. We're going to look at our shaped... Um, we're going to look at... Our, I forgot the words then. We're going to look at our shaped nesting dies. I just should have said which they were, wouldn't I? Our shape nesting dies. I was waiting to go over to Jan then. I'm so sorry, Jan. Our shape nesting dies. We have our cross stitch square. We have our cross stitch rectangle. We have our floral ditzy square and our ditzy rectangle. We have our scallop square and our scallop rectangle. There you go, Jan. Now you can do your demo. <laughs> I was still looking then thinking, have I missed a bit then? <laughs> <laughs> so I chose the Ditsy Floral one here, and these are really, really nice for using as um, shaker elements. So any nesting dies you can do this technique with. So, you know, if you've got different sets of nesting dies, have a look at them and just see how they actually fit together, and you'll be amazed at how many you can use. So I've taken these out of the packet. This is a set of three squares. The largest ones are five inch square and I'm going to use that large one as a decorative element on a piece of craft card.
card so we're going to cut that one and then I'm going to use the middle size one which measures three and a half inches square this is actually my mat layer for the card and this is what I was talking about earlier about making use of your card stock so because we're going to pop a piece of pattern paper over the top of this it doesn't matter that I'm going to chop the middle out of here and use it for my sort of die cut element so again that one's going on there that one's going on there and then we just need to pop those in fact if I get my big plates we should be able to do both of those at the same time I think they'll both fit on there there we go okay got my mat, uh, my shims and the top one there so just going to cut those out and then we're going to use that middle size one in the burgundy to make our shaker element to go on the front of the card so I'm just going to bring that one through the machine there. We're going to make an easel card with this one. So we've got both of those at the same time. They're just changing for those larger plates. Pop those back down there for a second. So we've actually got, look at that, just literally done the job. So I need to keep this bit because this is actually going to have my pattern layer and you would never know that there's a gap in the back so that's for that one and then we've got our little piece here that's got that lovely decorative element if I pop it on here you'll be able to see all those little sort of ditzy florals in there so that's the medium size one and then also we've got some little freebies so hang on to that bit we will hang on to that bit and then we've also got the larger one cut in that craft card there so again just a little tiny bit hanging in there there always is there's always a couple of little pieces that don't want to let go there we go looks as if it's been snowing now okay so just to start layering up then what I'm going to do with these is I've got sort of my easel card at the ready so this is going to be the base of the easel card here. You can see I've got that shape at the ready. And then I've taken a piece of that burgundy. And this is from the Say It With Flowers collection that we had on earlier this morning. And then this is the reverse side. So I've used the same paper from the 12 by 12 pad. I'm going to use one pattern side at the front and then the reverse side on the inside. So this one's to go on the inside I haven't cut anything out of this one but again you know if you've got uh, sentiments and things like that that you want to cut you can actually cut those out before you stick your layers together and it's just been a little bit more frugal with your cardstock so that one's going to sit inside like so and I've left quite a nice border around this one because I do love my craft card I must admit so that one's going to go on the inside let's pop that one to one side for a second and then the front, I've got my front panel, I've got my mat layer, and then we're going to stick this one on top. So I will do this one first, and I'm going to have that lovely floral print on the front of the card. Now, there's nothing to stop you using floral on both of them or using the plain side on both of them. You know, this is all down to personal preference. So this is just going to be the card base ready to receive that shaker element as a focal point so we'll get that one stuck down nice and straightforward either your tape runner or again if you're wanting to use a wet glue I'd always go to my old purpose if I'm using card stocks and paper so that one I don't think there is a right way around for it so that one's going to go on the front like so that's going to be my front panel and then we're going to go in with the craft card layer and I'm just going to flick to my dotty tape pen here to run over the back of those little filigree pieces and this one's going to stick on straight so we're going to start building that frame like so and then I'm going to use the next one to make my shaker element but we're actually going to go this way so there's nothing to stop you going straight with them if you wish but I just thought turning it that quarter turn just gives you a different sort of viewpoint altogether so what we need to do here then is build up those layers again so I've cut a couple more pieces I've got one piece that's an acetate layer again it's the worst thing ever to show you isn't it on screen and we're going to pop that behind here 
Then I'm going to put my foam tape on and then because it was quite busy behind here, I've just got a plain piece so that we can actually isolate those shaker pieces inside. So first thing I'm going to do then is stick with my dotty tape pen on the back of this one and we're going to pop the acetate. So all I did with the acetate was just measure the size of the square. Now I don't think, looking at how milky that is, that I took all of our acetate has a, a cover sheet on it and I'm just looking there we go. If it looks milky to you like that did to me, it's hard to show you on the, uh, the screen, but it, looking at it here with my eye, it does look a little bit cloudy. And the chances are, is it's got that lovely protective sheeting on. So I usually just start at a corner and pull that away. And as I say, I just measured the size of this with my ruler and then cut a piece of acetate to fit over the back of it there. So this is gonna hide behind there just give it a really good press to make sure that those dots have adhered to the acetate because we want to make sure that's sealed. And then again, I'm going to come back in with my foam tape. OK, and I'm just going to go around the inside so that if I go across the edges, we're going to be able to see the white foam tape through the edges. And I didn't want that. So there is enough room to just take your tape around the inside edges of that. Uh, as I say, it's almost as if it's been thought out, even though these weren't designed as a shaker sort of design. There's just enough room there for that tape to fit. And that makes me think that that's been taken into account at some point. So again, popping it around the inside like that, we're making a space for those little shaker pieces, but it's not covering up that ditzy floral. So when I put the back piece on, this piece is going to show through those little floral elements. So last one there again, just making sure that they're all really tucked up against each other so that there's no room for those shaker pieces to escape. Give them a nice press down. And then we need to take the liner off those. So again, just to take that piece away. And do that on all four sides and then on this one I've just gone to the traditional sequins so we did used to have these on the website and I know a lot of you will have bought into this when they were available we have had some more recently come out with some of the um, collections and you can buy sequins sort of in a lot of the shops but I just happen to have some of that coral mix which I thought went nicely with the colors so I'm going to pop some of those inside here trying not to get them onto the sticky bit she says sticking the packet to it oh stop it she don't want them to stick to the um the tape there that's it and then once we've got those contained inside there we can put this piece which matches the outside layer so i'm just going to spread those out a little tiny bit and you can put anything in here in the net if we can fit the next demo in as well which I'm looking at the clock and doubting it but I'd actually pop some little seed beads in the next one as a, a an option as well you know there's lots of different things that you can use as your shaker elements but that one's now going to go on top I didn't put the extra glue because this is just a paper layer I said earlier that I tended to add an extra layer of glue but you can just see now how we've got that lovely little shaker element this is going to go on here okay so again we just need to pop whoops little bit of glue on there that one's going to go in the middle of here just at an angle and then I need to stick it to the front of my card and then we've nearly finished in fact I've got a finished sample I can actually bring that in to show you because the only bit that I haven't put on here is the stopper for the um, the shaker So you can see we've got the elements of it there. But if I bring in the one that I did at home that I've decorated, we've got exactly the same idea there. I've popped the stopper on and I used the smallest one that I had left out of the set of three to make a little embellishment here. And then I've just added a sentiment in there from my stash. But you can see how we've got that gorgeous shaker element taking sort of centre front on there. 
That is absolutely lovely. What a brilliant way to use those. Now, I've got another one here using the um, scalloped edge square to show you how to do um, shaker cards. So you've got, we've got all three different shakers in there. That's with the squares. Ooh, there we go. There we go in the squares. Or you can use the scalloped edge rectangles. Then I've got the cross-stitched squares on here. So again, we've just done multi-layers. Isn't that absolutely lovely way to use it? Or the rectangles. I love that with a different angle. And then the one that uh, Jan's just used, another easel using those ditzy floral squares. And finally, the ditzy floral rectangles. Aren't they lovely? Just a beautiful, different way. So, so looking at those samples, some are, um, some of them are shakers, some of them aren't. Now, not very many people commenting at the moment. So, what we will do? Oh, Christine just said gorgeous demo. What we'll do is we'll do demo on the show. I know we've only done two, but we are going to do a third demo. But we'll just pop two of them into demo of the show. So, Jan, can you show us your two, please? Right, so first of all then, we made that little perfume bottle. So this was using the shaped shaker cards. And again, four different designs. This was the Eau de Parfum. And we also used that lovely little uh, Jewel of Love die to create our own shaker pieces in that one. So that was number one. And then number two was using that set of nesting dies, the Ditsy Florals there. And we made that nice easel card with the shaker on the front as a, a, as a sort of uh, focal point there. So that was number two. Okay, okay. so if you can, um can vote one or two, get your votes in. We will then come back to that after we've done this demo. So you've got a couple of minutes to vote. It'll give our, um, our Grace a couple of minutes to count them up. Loads of you loving that. Nice card, said Linda. Lois said, beautiful card, Jan, thank you. Now we're going to look at a third type of card, a uh, die rather, that we can use to make shakers. Now, this is our simple creator card die set. I absolutely love these. First one is your timeless foliage. Now, not only are you getting your dies here, you're getting your nested elements in the middle. So the timeless foliage gives you your circles for the middle, as does this lovely one here, which is, oh, go that way even, our fancy floral, again, with the circles in the middle. So you've got the detail that one is beautiful the next one we have got is our um, pretty petals with the squares in the nesting dies in the middle i mean you can imagine that being paper piece so many of these so then we have our traditional tiles very art deco very 20s a lovely design then we've got our dainty doodles and i love that shape in the middle it's also just the label shape isn't it absolutely gorgeous always getting your nested dies and finally look at that your rose garden with the heart nesting dies in the middle i can't wait to see what jan is going to show us what you, you can make with these so again, you know, using things that are in your stash already. Now, I know these have been launched fairly recently and I know all of the team just fell in love with them. They are so, so nice to use. And you've seen us use these in the previous shows in the way that the concept was designed. But I'm actually going to, I saw these in here, in the centre here and thought, right, nesting areas here, using these to make a little frame. So what I've done then is I've taken mine out of the pack. You get an outside cutting layer and your main die. So we're gonna pop those in place, but I also want an aperture in the center. So I'm gonna take the largest one of those little accent dies, the nesting dies, and we're gonna cut this all in one go through the, uh, the Gemini. So again, just some tape to stick everything in place to make sure that it doesn't move. So there should be a visible line around your metal work. None of the metal should be touching. And then when you're happy with it, we can pass that through the die cutting machine. So wherever I've got those dies in together, I can see that there's a gap 
in between them all okay now if you're not confident at doing this all in one pass through the machine do it in separate sections so cut out your main rectangle then cut the, the intricate die into it and then pop your aperture into that so don't think you have to cut them all in one go so we're going to pass that one through and then i'm going to use those two little nesting dies to make a frame to go on my design so I want that next size down and the one that's already in here, which is why I couldn't cut them both together. Okay, now these just in their own right are absolutely gorgeous. So again, just to take these away now, we've got that piece which I don't actually need take the outside edge away and then inside again just lifting it out you've got the gorgeous sort of work from that die now i need that middle one again now what we're going to do is we're going to create because this has cut the frame in here i know it's the exact size for what i want to do with the little frame so it's, it's not that one it's that one and that one that i want you could make a really thin frame with these two, but I actually wanted enough space to, again, to pop my tape around because we're going to make this the shaker element in the middle. So by choosing the smaller one here, it's given me sort of a, a slightly wider frame. So again, when you're happy with those in position, stick them down. And again, like I've just said, if you're not confident you know, doing it all in one go, then literally cut the outside one and then pop your other one on to cut the inside out or vice versa. So again, we'll pop those through and then I've got my pieces that I want to work with. So what I did is I used this outside die again, so that rectangle on its own, because I know that's the right size. I've used that to cut a piece of white card. So this is our multi-purpose card. And then I've just inked it up with some of our um, water reactive ink. So I've got a little bit of fuchsia, a bit of oasis and a bit of uh, spring meadow here. And I know now that that's the exact size to fit. And when you actually pop it with the black over it, I just think it, it pops beautifully. So that's going to be sort of the basis of it. So I'm going to get that one stuck down again, just with nice and light pressure with those dots. And again, round that middle section. If you want to use a little bit of wet glue, you can do so. And then just because these have been cut with the same down, we know that they're going to match up on there beautifully. And then again, I tend to go to the back just to give it a good press down. Okay, and then I want to matte and layer that and I've picked the turquoise colour out of there. So again, we're just going to pop that one on with the double sided tape pen. So that's just going to go, that one's just a quarter of an inch bigger. And these are actually going to go onto the top of a box. So we're going to make this the box sort of top of the feature of the box. So again, on here now, we've got our own little frame. Okay. And that just is the right size to fit back in here. So again, we're going to build this up and make it into a shaker element. So I've done just the largest of them and cut out again that little piece of acetate, which I know is going to stick behind here perfectly. So again, just for speed, I would normally use red line tape, but I can just see that time just disappears. So I'm going to pop a little bit of wet glue. I would normally prefer red line on the acetate, but this will work. And we're going to pop that one on the back. So that's making my window element. And then we need to add some of the foam tape again. So again, just, I would prefer time to let that dry, but it's like sort of coming into the uh, time warp. So again, just round the outside, I'm going to pop the shaker foam again. Whoops, don't cut the frame, Jan. Again, you would have much more time than I have. So just take your time making sure that each one of these sides nudges 
the last one so that there are no gaps. You want like a solid frame with your tape and you can see that that tape is just the perfect sort of size to fit round there. And then again, whoops, I've not done the best job there because we're rushing, but you can always trim these pieces out of the corners if they're sticking out like so. And then we need to take off the liner again and just expose that adhesive on the double-sided tape. And then what I've done this time, again, is I've used a combination. I have a little drawer that's all things shakers. It's got all sorts of bits that I've collected over the years. Some of them are sequins, some of them are beads, some of them are, you know, I've got all sorts in here. So I've got some little stars in there. I've got some little tiny, tiny beads in there. And then there are some seed beads as well. So I'm just going to pop those. And this time I'm going to pop them onto here. OK, and hope that they don't all roll away. So just into the centre there. And then what I want to do is stick this bit round the outside. So again, I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue. And then this one will just nestle nicely inside here. And again, I would leave that to set. OK. Make sure that that glue's set and we've got our sort of shaker element here. I've got a little tiny sentiment which is going to go on the front there, like so. And this is going to be the topper for our box. So I'm going to leave that one as it is and bring in the one that I've actually put together because I can just see that time disappearing in front of my eyes. Now, the one that I did at home, I did on a pink background. This one I did on the turquoise background, both the colours taken from the inks. But you can just see here how we've got those lovely shaker pieces and then I've decorated the sides of the box as well, just to give you a nice little gift box, but again, showcasing those dies with the shaker element in the centre there as that focal point again. What a what a beautiful way to use those dies. I love that one. That's the dainty doodle. And I've got another one here that happens to be a shaker as well. Um, another one on the dainty doodle. You can see we've just put it on the front of a card like that. Now here we have the, uh, beautiful twisted easel. So we've put the um, die on the top and the inside and this one is so so clever this is the tile one and what we've done is we've created it on the inside so it's like a pop out on the inside but we've also used it as a stencil so remember those dies brilliant for your front of your cards brilliant for the insides but they also have multiple uses as a stencil another one here as a shaker oh that's a easel shakers so i missed that one and another couple that have been made very recently we've got this one here using that floral which is gorgeous with the scent with the stent, um, shaker in the middle and i love this one the tri-fold one where you've got it open on the sides and solid in the middle i hope you find something on there from our simple creator cards that you like and that you'll be making something with those too Right, now I've got to put those back because they're part of the demos of the week. So I need to make sure I don't put those away, especially as one of those is mine. Right, so adding to that demo of the week, we've got the demo of the show. And that one, surprises me, is two. Excellent. I thought number one was going to win. Right. I thought number one, but it's number two. So that was the easel card then. I think then that's using, beautiful. Yeah, those but nesting dies. So again, we've got that little sort of shaker element in the centre there. Thank you very much, guys. Brilliant. Loads of people were loving the um, loving your box. Vanessa, Lois, Linda, um, Teresa and Gareth says, I love these. They just arrived yesterday. Well, Gareth, hopefully some of the ones that I've shown you will have given you some inspiration as well. Now that we feel like we've raced through that show, I perhaps we have, but hopefully it's given you a few, um, you know, grains of thought on how you can make your shaker cards from little gift boxes to bigger gift boxes to easel cards you know just to your regular cards but it's so much fun to make a shaker card now 
We are away now until 6 p.m. when it's going to be all guns blazing. We are going to come in with our very fast-paced Sunday evening show that we always do, which is our Second Chance Sunday. So we're going to whiz through some of the brilliant, brilliant deals that you've seen during the week that you've loved. And we're going to talk about all the deals, because don't forget, it's double points as well. So we're going to be talking about that later on tonight. But if you want to join us, we'll be back 6 p.m. UK time, which is 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, and we'd hope that you can come and join us then. But until then, Jen and I are going to have a little bit of break. I hope you do too. I don't think we're going to go outside because it seems to be raining a lot. See the rain and all the planes are going overhead. So yeah, we'll stay inside, hopefully keep nice and warm. And hopefully you will be back too to join us at 6pm. So until then, see you later. Bye.